Hello, welcome to Real Frank Football. Thanks for checking it out. In this episode, we're going to break down week four of the college football season. We had some more upsets and some crazy finishes to some big games and some littler games and some breaking news. And also, wide receivers get to wear smart watches now while playing in a game. All that coming up next. Real Frank. All right, let's get right into week four. Let's start off with Missouri versus Auburn. What a game. The Hiss game had everything. You had drama. You had hearts broken. You had your highs and your lows. So let's take a look. Now, Missouri has a chance to win this game before going to overtime, which they eventually did. But here it is. The kicker is going to try and win this. And he's going to be the hero, right? Here he goes. Oh, wide right. Oh, no. That had to hurt. So Missouri had a chance to win it before going to overtime, and the kicker missed it wide right. That's, and as you can see here, it's not that far of a field goal. Maybe 20-yard field goal. Maybe 25 yards. But... He missed the field goal. So they go to overtime. But before they went to overtime, this was Missouri's quarterback. And he thinks that this game is a wrap. He's putting on his, his hat. He's running out. Yeah, we got this. We won. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, oh, I, uh, I guess not. Uh, yeah. So let's watch it again. He's so... He's so positive that they uh, got this game in the bag. Oh, let me put my hand on, watch my ball. Yeah, this game is in the box. Here we go. Oh, 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 what happened? Oh, ooh, he missed it. Sees. So here are some uh, funny tweets that someone put out there. Missouri's kicker with the chance to win the game. Like when you guys, when you play, uh, like Madden, and they have that crazy kicking stick. That kicking stick sometimes would be a pain in the butt in trying to control that kicking stick, so they're trying to treat it like the game. So that's that's a pretty good one there. And then here is uh, another crazy thing. So they go to overtime. I believe Auburn kicks a field goal, and Missouri gets the ball, and here it is. They're going to score the touchdown to win the game, and it's all over. So here's Missouri running back. He said, oh, no, we got no. No! Oh! This poor kid is extending the ball out, and as he extends it, he loses the ball. Look at that. The ball is right here. And as he's extending it, I mean, he's got a free shot. Look at no one's in front of him. All he has to do is walk across. Walk across, and this game is over. This game over, and he loses the ball. He loses the ball as he crosses the goal line, and uh, it's a considered a touchback, and Auburn sneaks by and wins this game. What a crazy finish. I mean, I mean, just to watch this, he, he is, he's all by himself. He, look, at he's going to, all he has to do is dive. Really, all he has to do is dive, and he's in. And for whatever reason, he's tried to extend the ball, and he fumbles it. What a crazy finish. Oh boy! And then we had a uh, another crazy upset. Middle Tennessee upsets Miami, Florida. Oh boy! I mean, the way this game started, or I should say, the pregame festivity started for this game should have been a big red flag for everyone. Here is uh, someone's footage of them tailgating, and as they're tailgating, they're getting hurricane rain conditions sweeping through. I mean, look at that. It's crazy. They're hanging on to stuff. The rain's going all over the place. This person right here, I think he might. this person might fly away. Look at I mean, they're they're holding on for dear life there. Look at dear life. What a crazy scene before a game. All that rain. It's just wild that quickly. That should have been a big red flag to everybody. Like, mm, maybe we should cancel this game. <laughs> Maybe there'll be some lightning here. We get a delay and, and redo this because that was a sign of things to come. 
So here we are. Uh, this this play was in the game, one of the big plays. It seemed like Middle Tennessee State uh, had all these big passing plays. And here's one. This is a, a quarterback's dream. They're in the end zone. It looks like they're on the one yard line. So this is like 99 yards, 98 yards. And he throws a bomb and a perfect bomb. Look at this thing. He burns that Miami DB so bad. That's like padding the stats right there. A perfect bomb from the one or two yard line. It's just amazing. That's every quarterback stream. Look at this. I mean, that DB is beaten so bad. Look at that. Oh my goodness. No one's around him. What a play. What a pass. Here is what Middle Tennessee was paid. Middle Tennessee goes to Miami, gets 1.5 million guarantee plus another. 40000 for travel expenses and gets a big win. Oh, boy. That's a tough one to, to swallow there. They, you know, um, they made a little money. Oh, yeah, Middle Tennessee. 1.5, man. I'm sure that's a lot of money for that school. They can do a lot of things with that, except not pay their players. Oh, no, another crying Jordan. I'm Miami's head coach, and he's a hometown boy, too. He, he was supposed to be a savior just like Scott Frost, and oh, no, he's crying. Another crying Jordan. Oh, these hometown guys trying to come back and alumni and rebuild their programs. Oh, this one's got to hurt bad. I saw this video, someone tweeted this video, <laughs> and this one had me rolling. So this is to, supposed to simulate the Miami Hurricane bandwagon there. Hey, everything's going great. Woo, look at us. We're having a great time. Uh-oh. 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 We're losing. All these bandwagon people are leaving. Oh, let's get out of there. All the bandwind people leaving the bandwagon. All the Miami Hurricane bandwagon people all jumping ship, man. Oh boy, those Miami Hurricane people jumping bandwagon. Oh, that was a very funny video that someone tweeted. Baylor in Iowa State was another crazy game. Uh, there was some questionable officiating in this one, especially in the first half that some people were questioning in here. So let's take a look at some of the plays. Uh, here's one early in the game. Iowa State's got the ball. It gets it punched out as he's crossing the goal line. And he grabs it, but it doesn't look like he has truly possession of the ball. And the refs, I believe, ruled this one a, a touchdown and counted it. So in reality, it should have been a touchback because he lost control of the ball as he was going out of bounds and crossing the line there. It's crazy. It's crazy, but they said he had enough security in it as he crossed the line, apparently. So a lot of, uh, a lot of Iowa State and Baylor people going both ways were pretty upset in this game. Here is someone's opinion about the first half recap of the Iowa State Baylor game. Bunch of blind officials with, with dogs. <laughs> That's pretty funny too. <laughs> and apparently this guy, this guy wasn't too happy. It's amazing that he found the camera. Look at that. He's double fingering it, man. Double finger at you. I don't know if that's to the refs or BYU. But he ain't having it. Double fingers. Pow! That's what he's doing. And then this, this was one of the strangest things I've ever seen on a sideline. All right. This is BYU's coach here. This I don't uh, quite understand. All right. Let's take a, I wanted to show you this. It's smacking everyone's butt, man. What's he doing? Clapping, 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 clapping. And then, oh, get me, coach. I want one. Bam! Smack my butt. Oh, my God. What's going on? This is during the game. Here, come get yours. I want mine. I want mine. What is going on with this? It was one of the strangest scenes I've ever seen. It was crazy. What do you think this... Anyone got an idea of what's going on here? I mean, is uh, they a touchy-feely uh, group of people? Is uh, this a... A, 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 an award? Oh, it'd be great if someone farted as he was smacking him. Look at this guy. Get me, coach. I'm old, I'm next, coach. Come here, coach. I want it. Oh, look at this. And then the final, come over here. Let me give you yours. Whack. 
I mean, is that normal? I've never seen that before. I don't get it. Maybe it's some code. Maybe that's how they get pumped. Maybe they did something bad. Kind of kinky. And then this person pointed out after the end of the game, this guy's mustache, the Mountie or whoever, the police who's ever escorting BYU's coach has a pretty impressive mustache there. I mean, that is impressive. It looks pretty good. That's a handsome, that's a handsome mustache there. He, you can tell this Mountie takes some time. Special treatment. He's probably got the fancy oil. Make sure that mustache is just right before he puts that hat on. That badge. Wrap that gun around his waist to start his day. Because that mustache is his power tool. That mustache represents who he is. Crazy, but beautiful. And then another crazy game, right? Arkansas versus Texas, Texas A&M. Number 10 versus number 23. Another fantastic game with a crazy finish. So uh, this, this play right here is probably changing the whole game as we talk about momentum. Arkansas was getting ready to score, and they're going to take a, a pretty deep, significant lead. They're going to be up by two touchdowns in this play. So they hike the ball. The Arkansas QB fumbles the ball. Texas A&M player picks it up. He's getting ready to get tackled. He hands it off to another one of his teammates, and they run all the way down to score a touchdown. So rather than being up two touchdowns, the game is tied. What a crazy play. But Texas A&M still had a chance to win this game. There's a few seconds left in the game, eh, maybe like 30, 40 seconds left. And they come all the way down, and they got this drive, and here they go to kick it to win it. And there it goes. Oh, doink. That thing doinked. That thing doinked off the upright. And, and what's crazy is sometimes when, most of the time when these things doink, boom. You see it right up here? They bounce in some, sometimes. But the accuracy to hit that top, boom. Boom. And then it falls to the front of the goalpost. What a heartbreaker there. And that would have basically won the game for Arkansas. And this was one of the signs that was in the stands uh, before the game. I thought it was fantastic. What do Texas A&M and Adam Levine have in common? Both associated with the color maroon. Both losers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Adam Levine. Like it came out this week that he was. Uh, Finding some hot girls out there. He's married. I think his wife's pregnant. His wife is pretty attractive too, but apparently that's not good enough. He's not getting it at home. So Adam was uh, texting these girls. He got busted. So this is a kickback to that news that broke over the past week about Adam Levine and his dirty ways of thinking and life and everything. So this girl took it personally and compared him to Texas A&M. Ah, the drama. The drama. Now, Florida and Tennessee. I mean, this was another fantastic game, but pretty much Tennessee handled its business. It had a history of losing to Florida. I think they've uh, got that monkey off the back, and then someone tweeted this. Uh, all of Vol Nation right now. Oh, all relaxed and chill, man. Look at that chill. Oh, we beat Florida finally. It's been a while. Oh, the relief there. Ben Affleck smoking his stick. He's got his Tennessee shirt on. Oh, we did it. We finally did it. And then another doozy, Oregon versus Washington State. And Washington State had this game. They dominated this game in the first half. And Bo Nix, you know, you either get good Bo Nix or bad Bo Nix. And usually he's been pretty bad. He got ran out of Auburn, basically. Here he is against Oregon. And pretty much Washington State's got this wrapped. Oregon just scores. And Washington State's going to probably go down and score because they were they were unstoppable, especially their QB play. But here we go. To steal the game, quarterback throws it right to the Oregon's defensive end, and he runs it back. For Look at that. Oh, you know that had to hurt. Look at that. Immediately, he knows what he has done, and he is just 
He just wants a time machine right then and there to go back and uh, fix that. Oh, my God. Look at that. Boo. Defensive end's got some great hands. Snatched it right out of the air. Oh, and that's how that game ended. Pretty crazy. But a great finish, though. And then someone tweeted this. They must be a Cougar fan. Coog dip. The correct term, Coog dip, predates 1980, a self-proclaimed ironic abbreviation of the reversal of good fortune attributed to the Washington State University football team, whereby a sudden or an unexpected mistake causes the team to lose at the end of a game akin to snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Oh, my God. Coog fans should have expected it. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. Bashing yourself. They kind of got a term for it. Coog dip where they, they give the game away. And they got a notorious history of it. Uh, wow. That's, that stinks. And then Miami versus Northwestern. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Northwestern is... Uh, is pretty much a dumpster fire. Oh my god. Miami, Ohio. The teams that they have lost to this season, the only team they have beaten is Nebraska. So, in hindsight, you lose to Northwestern, who is garbage. Scott Frost should have lost his job. <laughs> Miami, Ohio goes to Northwestern and gets 950,000 guaranteed and picks up a win 17 to 14. Well, at least it was only $950,000. All right. Bit of a bargain there. Good for that. And you know, probably doesn't hurt as much, you know? And Northwestern loses to Miami on a field goal with 19 seconds left. Wildcats remain winless. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that Nebraska game was an iron. <laughs> Brutal, brutal, very brutal. And this one. The Wildcats beat Nebraska to open the season. They have since lost to Duke, Southern Illinois, and Miami, Ohio. Those last three, Southern Illinois, or last two, Southern Illinois and Miami, Ohio, awful. Awful for a Big Ten team. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Something's got to change there, man. I mean, come on. Minnesota and Michigan State. Talk about an ass kicking. Minnesota came in to Sparty, and Sparty nicknamed their uh, stadium the Woodshed. <laughs> the Woodshed. All righty, it sure is a woodshed. They got beaten in the woodshed. Oh, my goodness. And the only thing they scored, a, a touchdown, but they only got the touchdown with 17 seconds to go. Otherwise, this game would have been a shutout, a disgusting shutout at home. And then here's a good one. Michigan State fan realizing Kenneth Walker isn't here to carry us to 11 wins. Oh, no, we suck again. Yes, you do. You suck again. And here's some great tweets. What's 10 years and 95 million guaranteed amongst Michigan State friends? 34 to 7 beating. Boom! A lot of fears in recent years that the sport is becoming increasingly paid to win. Not enough credit goes to teams like Michigan State. Paid big money for a coach. Miami, big money for a new coach. Texas, big money for a coach. Big money for a coach a year ago. And Texas A&M, they paid big money for our, our friend over there. And he got blown up by Appalachian State for their commitment to competitive equality by being worse than teams they outspend. What a valid point that is. And man, this, this is a great tweet. One of my favorites of all time. Breaking. A man known as Mel Tech Tucker is currently wanted for stealing $95 million from the Michigan State football team. When to say the best way to protect yourself from Tuck is to throw something at him as he won't be able to defend it. <laughs> oh my god, you get it? The defense is so bad. You, you can throw something at him, he won't be able to defend it. Oh my god, but guess what? 
But they are who we thought they were. That's right. But they are who we thought they were. They are, sir. $95 million man. Woo! So desperate to keep them. We didn't want someone to take them from us. Oh, my God. You know, we've been there two years and haven't done shit. But we're going to give him $95 million because he beat Michigan. Woo! What a steal. Oh, I love it. But they are who we thought they were. <laughs> and then Wisconsin versus Ohio State. Obviously, nothing new and exciting here. This game was over as soon as they, they put it on the schedule. I mean, Ohio State's just on another tier. They're an NFL team. There's only like, you got Ohio State, Georgia, and Alabama. That's it. And these are all little kids' high school teams. It's it's pretty it's pretty comical. And, you know, even though Georgia did score uh, struggle a little bit with Kent State, but different levels here we're talking. But the thing that's most fascinating about this game is this. This is uh, Marvin Harris Jr. And he has an app. This is during the game. <laughs> he has an Apple Watch. He's wearing his Apple Watch during the game. Now, is he really... Is he really that worried or about his activity level and he needs to log it or his steps? He wants to make sure he gets his steps in. So he's got to wear the watch at all times, even during the game. Here you can see it better. He's got a towel and you can see see the watch there. I mean, he is really, really concerned about his uh, his steps or maybe, I don't assume his cell phone's nearby. So it's got to be steps, right? His activities. He wants to make sure he gets his good cardio in. But even more crazy is his, his cleats. Man, this guy has some fancy cleats. They're Nike cleats, but they're doctored up to look like Louis Vuitton. I think that's what it is. I'm not a fancy man, so maybe that's what it is. But that's his cleats. It says LV Louis Vuitton, maybe? I don't know. But those are some impressive fancy cleats. I'm assuming that he had someone spray paint them. But an Apple Watch, this guy is a fancy receiver. He has to have his steps in and his fancy shoes. Amazing. Oh, but there was one person who got beaten up pretty good in the Ohio State game. Poor Brutus. Brutus gets blown out. Oh my God. I, I could watch this video over and over. Boom, blown out. Brutus gets blown out. And what's amazing, if you watch it closely, it is a blindside one, too. Look at here's he doesn't see it coming. Boom! He, he's looking over here at these people on their little Nerf ball bubble balls, and he just gets boom, boom. Oh, you you know the guy who's playing Brutus snapped his. He's gonna have some serious whiplash. Boom! And he was pissed. Brutus was pissed at that blindside hit. I I could have this on repeat all day long. The way his head snaps is a beautiful thing. Boom! Oh! Even with that costume, that had to stink pretty good. And then Utah versus Arizona State. Now, there's nothing really relevant to report here, but what I did want to talk about is they, they blew out Herm Edwards, the head coach of Arizona State. So the intern head coach coached this game, 13-34. They got blown out. But this whole story is very interesting. How dirty and corrupt some places could be in sports. Now, the word on the street, Herm Edwards is a pretty great guy, or a nice guy, I should say, but Arizona staffers were reportedly leaking information to help opponents get Herm Edwards fired. That is wild, man. His own staff giving out intel to opposing teams in hopes that they get blown out so Herm Edwards can get fired. It's just, it's just a crazy thought i mean there's a chance too that when herm gets blown out and they bring in a new guy they're gonna lose their jobs too so i don't quite understand this technique or strategy unless it was a backhand deal for something it's just i've never heard of anything in any sports it's just crazy that this actually happened and it's even more crazy is this article here an opposing coach recently told The Athletic that it wasn't hard to get intel on the season's team because some with Arizona State Athletics wanted a coaching change. To make matters worse, the report states that Edwards never bothered to familiar himself with NCAA bylaws. So people inside the program, I mean, he's been there quite some time now, and all of a sudden it boils to a head. That's what losing really comes down to. If he would have kept winning, 
there'd be no problem if he didn't understand the NCAA bylaws. Someone would cover for him. But when you start losing, that means lost revenue because of ticket sales. All of a sudden, they got a problem with them and they're going to find a way to get rid of them. That's the crazy world of sports. When everything is good, lose, oh, they're gunning for you. And here's an interesting thing. There's rumors. There's been some rumors that this is the actual video that he was actually fired on the field last weekend after they lost to Eastern Michigan, I believe they were playing. And people are believing that this may be the actual video that someone recorded that was on the field of the bigwigs, the athletic director, the president, or somebody, people like that, telling him that they were going to fire him. So let's take a look. Again, it's rumor that this is potentially, but if you watch it, it could be from the body language and, and reaction. So here it is. Walking off the field, sees his big bosses. He's going to walk towards them. Hey, man, going over here to talk. This guy in the white shirt, I think is this guy right here. He's talking, I don't know what happened in this game. He puts his hand on his back here in a second and says, I think we're going to let you go. We're going to let you go. Okay. And he's like, yeah, we need to let you go. All right, that's that's the rumor. So what do you, what do you think? Do you think it happened there? I mean, this conversation, looks like they're asking about the game. I don't know what happened, the plays, plays. Man, and then look at the faces. You think we should tell them? We're gonna let you go. Okay. I understand. I get it. But that's the rumor. That's the video that potentially he got canned on the field after the game as he's walking up. Amazing. But what a week four. I can't wait for week five. I hope you'll join me next week when I break down week four five and go through all those amazing games because i'm sure there's going to be some crazy ones there too all right that's a wrap for week four i hope you join me for week five and we could break down some of those highlights until next week thanks for watching